My question to you is, any sufficiently advanced artificial intelligence would be able to redesign itself and self-replicate very quickly. So is it even possible to create a human-friendly, benevolent artificial intelligence for the long run? It's a good question. Um, it's probably possible, but it may not be the most probable outcome of the development of very advanced general purpose artificial intelligence. So Nick Bostrom in this really interesting new book talks about the development of AI that's super intelligent, that is um, smarter than humans in virtually every domain. And the big worry that he articulates in the book, and this gives rise to a lot of the concern in the artificial intelligence community that's been discussed in the media, is that there'll be a control problem. There won't be a way for us to control the development of super intelligent AI so that it works for human ends and in tandem with our interests rather than against us. It's not that it will necessarily want to take us out. It's just that its main goals may not be hospitable to the continuation of human life. It may have different, uh, different priorities from us, depending on how far evolved it is over time. Right, and I mean, Nick Bostrom uses an example of um, something that wants to make paper clips, which doesn't sound like you know something a super intelligence would really want to do, but the idea is colorful because it illustrates that a super intelligence could have the means to use all the matter on the planet for a rather boring, mundane end that would, in fact, uh, lead to the ruin of humanity. Because, you know, if all the matter on the planet is used to make paper clips, it obviously wouldn't sustain human life. Understood. Well, let me ask you this. Many of the developers of artificial intelligence are also staunch and enthusiastic supporters like Ray Kurzweil. So how do we kind of entrust them to have a profound and conscientious approach to their creations. Right. Um, so there are vested interests. I mean, the people, um, you know, in Deep Mind, say, who, which is an, a company that Google just purchased, um, you know, they obviously want the development of AI to succeed, but the people who have been advocates of AI over the years, and by AI here I mean domain general um, AI and especially super intelligent AI, uh, they, they generally are quite concerned. And we've seen that a lot recently. There have been a lot of meetings devoted to the development of safe super intelligence. Um, and this has been encouraged by the book that Nick Bostrom wrote. So we can only hope. I mean, it, it is, you know, somewhat unsettling. Um, you know, we just have to hope for the best. I read the, the other day, there was a, a gentleman who was involved in the creation of AI, and he was a young man, and he was not too concerned. He felt this was much ado about nothing, and he said that uh, he didn't get the argument about AI uh, being adversarial to our future, and he thought that if the AI didn't like us, we would just build new AI and turn that off. But that seems incredibly naive to me. Right. So Bostrom goes through a lot of different scenarios in his book, such as keeping AI in the box, um, you know, where we just look at what the AI calculates and we box it in so that it doesn't have um, a great understanding of the external world and it can't act in the external world. But the problem is that super intelligent AI by definition is smarter than humans in every domain. Okay. So if that truly can be developed, it could probably fool us into letting it out of the box. In fact, there have been some papers on this, uh, indicating that AI would quickly, uh, encourage humans to let it out of the box, you know, and so on for other type of safeguards. I mean, if an AI is really that smart and it wants to act in the world, um, it's going to know that it has a kill switch, for example. And yet the genie would be out of the bottle and making promises right. and that would be that. 